Happy Halloween. This is our spookiest one of them all so far. Uh, this is blood magic. Obviously, a little bit of a warning. This, I mean, it's just gonna be like essentially just red liquid, but you know, if, if, you, if, if you have issues with, you know, red liquid of any kind, I would suggest, you know, not watching this maybe, <laughs> but it's it's just stylized, fictitious red liquid. That's it, it, If it makes you feel better, we can call it that. You know, <laughs> I, I, I tend to have age ranges that range wildly, so I can't just assume that this is going to be for adults. I do have to assume that there are going to be kids watching this, so I've got to make sure, you know, everything's on the up and up. Now, getting started, we are going to be using the lasso tool quite a bit. If you don't know what that is, you can come up here, click and hold, and you have these options. This is your lasso tool. We're going to come to just the classic lasso. And this lets us draw crazy random shapes to paint in. So our red liquid is going to be kind of floating in a, in a bulbous kind of like, you know, bubbly kind of thing in the air because, you know, it's magic and ooh, spooky, just like you saw in the beginning. So let's get started. We're just going to draw with our lasso tool a circle like shape, kind of overly kind of, you know, crazy. Now, when we're doing a lasso tool, if you hold down shift, you'll notice the cursor has a plus sign on it. That means if we draw anything else, it'll be added to the selection that we can then paint. But if we hold down alt, we now have a little minus sign next to the cursor. That means if we draw next, It'll be taken away from the selection. So let's add a couple extra bubbly bits. All right, that's a good start. Now we are going to go down to red and we're going to grab this middle red right here. And that's going to be our base. We're going to be using only hard round and soft round this entire time. And most of the time we're going to be using soft round. Now these are basic brushes that can be found in any program and they might not be named hard or soft round brush, but they are in pretty much every program. So you just got to find them. <laughs> so now we've got a silhouette and let's actually chop this up a bit more. Let's get our hard round brush and we can clean this up. So if we have any spots that are too sharp, we can curve them up a bit with our eraser and if we get our hard round brush, we can paint. Because what we're doing right now is we're looking for a good silhouette, meaning just a good exterior shape. Yeah, that's pretty good, I like that, nice, okay, there we go. All right, that we'll say is our silhouette. So now, what we do with silhouettes is we are going to make a new layer down here, and we're going to right click it and do create clipping mask. And as you probably know, if you followed along this far in my tutorials, a clipping mask means everything you paint stays inside the mask it's clipped to. So we're gonna get a soft round brush and we're gonna be using soft round brush for most of the rest of this tutorial. So our light source is coming from up here, coming down and our shadow area is gonna be down here at the bottom right. So we're gonna take our brush nice and big and we're just gonna gently, with a darker color, we just got ourselves a nice darker red. Just kinda gently put that shadow in all of these shapes. We can make our brush a little smaller to fit better. And the bigger the bulb, the more shadow it has. And it's not gonna be uniform either. It's not gonna be the same across the board. We want this to look bubbly. Make this a little darker, bring that shadow up a little bit more, put a couple extra blotches in there. And now let's go a little lighter, bring that thing up there a bit. We're gonna come to the opposite side. And this is our first, first bit of lighting we're really gonna be doing here. Now, if we're doing this stuff right, liquid, especially thick liquid, like, you know, blood, <laughs> uh, tends to have almost like a weird, extra texture to it. So instead of the surface of your blood looking like this, if it's just sitting there, it looks like this. So keep that in mind as you progress. Now let's grab that dark color and bring a little bit of it up to the top, just a bit, not over our uh, our light source, but we're gonna wrap it around just a little bit, give it a little extra, a little extra depth. All right, now liquid is very, very, very reflective. So we're gonna come up here to a near white. We're gonna find our spots where we want the most reflection. And reflections, by the way, can depending on the light source can be, like if it's inside with fluorescent lights, they could be pretty sharp, but depending, depending. If it's outside in like the moon or the sun, then this light source you're adding here, you'll want to make sure that this color is the color of the light source. So we're going to add a nice, big bright light source on all of our major bulbs 
You can shrink your brush down a bit. You can add multiple light sources depending on how the liquid's going to curve. You can even have it kind of flow with the curve a little bit, but it's better. And this sort of helps sell the idea that this liquid's kind of chunky if, uh, if your light source looks kind of chunky. And if you need to smooth it out your light source, you can just grab the colors nearby, the off pinks, the off whites, the reds, the dark reds, the deep reds. And this will sort of give your creation some flow. Good so far, good so far. Now, let's get our bright red and we're going to put it on the bottom. And this is what's commonly referred to as bounce light. I'm just gonna paint that on the bottom, keep it a little chunky. And this is essentially like our light source up here, but it's in the opposite direction of our light source. And we're gonna act, you know, treat it as it's getting its own light source. So you know how we got this one kind of a big chunk and kind of loops around the top left of our, you know, big areas. Well, this one's going to be kind of chunky like this one, but down here on the bottom right, and it's gonna be much lighter. It's not going to be as bright as our main light source here because that's our light source. This is a, this is coming from a secondary light source. Really feel free to add in some interesting designs, but don't make them too sharp. If the rest of your blood is thin, is a uh, smooth, then adding sharp detail will stand out like a sore thumb. That's not quite what you want, but bounce light with liquid, super important, especially if it's bouncing off other liquid. So for example, instead of putting this bounce light on the bottom right of this, I put it directly below because that's the spot closest to our main blood here. We can even brighten that a bit because the light's bouncing off each other. And if you've gotten this far now, I'm sure if, if this is your first foray into painting liquids, you might be pretty proud of yourself right now, which good, very good. You should be. Look at you. If you ever start to see any sharp things like you, if you for whatever reason you've got you know weird sharp lines in your wet smooth liquid you should probably you know brush those out so you grab the color near it and you kind of with your soft brush kind of hit it back a bit you could get the light kind of hit that back a bit and you'll end up smoothing out and smoothing over these areas that uh that you <laughs> sharpened for whatever reason so for example this is still kind of sharp so we can smooth this out and let's add a little bit more darkness right here. I kind of like it because it really, again, sort of still helps sell the thickness of our liquid. Very thick liquid has a much more strong shadow. Thin, transparent liquid like water has a very weak shadow because essentially you can just see right through it. But something like blood or, I don't know, yogurt. <laughs> very thick shadow, yogurt. <laughs> In fact, we can even, and I suggest, we get a deeper red. So let's hit that shadow a little harder. Don't be afraid of adding shadow. Don't be afraid of the shadows. <laughs> and pretty much just hit your shadow areas, not, not your bounce light. Don't come back down into your bounce light of any of these areas, but your shadow areas, hit them a little harder with that shadow, depending on how thick the areas you're drawn so far are. Vary the intensity of your shadows. Now, you know how I said your light needs to be whatever color your light source is? 
usually speaking, your bounce light is going to be the exact same. So no matter what liquid you're drawing, and real quick, I'm just going to show you. If we grab the color that the light is coming down and bouncing off of to hit the underside of this, we could end up with some very strange results, but this is very accurate if it's, you know, and you can just drop the opacity down if you think the color blending is a little too funky or too strong. But depending on the material that you're, you're putting that bounce light to, this is very accurate. So something to keep in mind, it really helps, you know, sell the idea of how reflective whatever you're drawing is. You feel me? When you make sure that whatever you're drawing fits in the environment that you've painted, that's how you know it all kind of fits together and that's the real secret sauce. But now I am gonna make a new layer and it's gonna be a clipping mask and I'm gonna grab the red and we're going to switch to screen. And we're just going to take that brush and kind of put it into the lighter areas just a touch because if the liquid isn't thick enough to actually have enough substance for a shadow, if it's thin, it's, it's not gonna even cast a shadow. It's like when you put a flashlight behind somebody's ear because that area is so thin you could it turns all red and you kind of see through it and it's the blood through it and the cartilage and all that. You can even actually use this screen to touch up your bounce light too while you're at it. <laughs> it's it's cool. It just adds extra layers of vibrancy. But yeah, it's like the ear thing. If the liquid or whatever isn't thick enough to actually be to actually, you know, have substance to where it stops light from going through it, then, you know, don't give it too much of a shadow. In fact, you can use this screen thing like I said, to just lighten it up if it's very thin, if it's a very thin area. Now we're going to go to pure white right up there, top left. We're going to hit bits of our light source. And depending on how strong or the direction of the light source, we're going to hit the sides. Now this doesn't have to be white. This could be your pink. This could be your very bright red. And you start adding things with values like uh, blacks and whites. They tend to uh, take away the vibrance of a piece. So be careful, you don't have to use white. You don't have to do this. I'm just gonna add a little bit, kind of everywhere the light's gonna touch a bit. Just a touch on that rim there. If we do too much, it'll look flat. And we do not want flat. Now actually I'm gonna diffuse that light a bit. Paint on some more red here. I'm gonna actually paint some red over that rim light because I personally kind of like more vibrant pieces. And the white does kind of diffuse it a bit too much for me. But you would say, for example, use either white or blue if you're using water, which we'll be painting later in our curriculum. Nice. Let's move this down a bit. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of extra credit. And that means all I'm gonna do is just give it a quick little shadow.
All right, so there we go. Blood magic done in the bag. Your first foray into liquid painting. Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. You did pretty good. And I know liquid can be a real hassle. And <laughs> I plan on actually covering the easy... Well, no. Water is really not easy. But I'm going to be covering water and water-like stuff. And how it bends, how it moves, and all that jazz. Uh, but either way, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful, helpful, or entertaining. Leave a like if you liked it. Dislike if you dislike it. Subscribe to see more. Thank you so much to my amazing patrons. I appreciate the ever-loving that of you for supporting the ever loving that of me and happy halloween be safe have fun i hope you had a good spooky season uh sorry i couldn't get tutorials till the very end but thankfully you know we got fall and other fun seasons and stuff to do a whole mess of tutorials and then christmas after that so feel free to stick around because i've got now i've got time done with all my projects i can get to my, my tutorials back thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care